Christian. You're a Christian, you want to read the Quran. Okay, so uh, are you a preacher or are you just a, no, a, a normal? Oh, right. I'm just making sure, you know? So, so uh, no, no, it's fine. We, we usually, what we do, I don't like to debate. Yeah, 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 it's usually for our safety first, number one, and other than that, for people to benefit, right? So I wanted to ask you if you know the difference between Islam and Christianity. Islam believes uh, Muhammad is the greatest of creation. Okay. Christianity says Jesus is Son of God. Okay. Christianity believes Muhammad is not a prophet. Okay. Uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Okay. We believe there's one God and only one God. One God united, so only one person. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Christianity believes three beings. One yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's like the main difference. Okay. That, that's very good. It's not bad, right? But no Muslims usually just go into a discussion by saying we believe Prophet Muhammad is the best of the creation. We don't go. We don't go in a discussion like this. The reason being is because the Prophet told us not to compare between the prophets and in a way that degrades one of them. So we don't look at it as a competition, this prophet versus that prophet. We believe all of them are prophets of God, we should believe in, in them equally and should follow them, right? When it comes to belief, we believe in all of them, right? We don't just believe in one and reject the other. But the thing is this, you said two things. You said Christians believe he's the son of God, Jesus is the son of God, and then you mentioned the Trinity. And then, what, which we believe is three gods, by the way, not three persons, no, three gods, right? You yes, yes, but I want to ask you this, right? You say you believe in the Trinity, the Trinity says God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, right? Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. So who's God the Son? Jesus Christ. So Jesus is God? Yes. But he's also the Son of God? Yes. So he's the Son of himself? No, that's not true. Because he's three persons. If it was one person, he was saying, oh, I'm the Son of myself. That's okay. different. So is God one? God is one. Three so is, is that God which is one, a Father or a Son? It's Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Okay. There's so, one God. Three. Okay, okay, I'll take this more slowly with you again. Look, God the Father, is that 100% God? He's 100% God. God the Son, is that 100% God? God the Holy Spirit, is that 100% God? How many percent do we have now? 300%? Well, it's not 100%, it's not three times what No, no, I'm saying is it fully God, that's the term used. Fully God means 100%. Yes, they're all. Meaning they're not 33% Father, 33% Son, and 33% Holy Spirit that make 100% God. That's not the case. No, they're all God. Because that's partialism, right? So you believe, no, not, they're all fully God. Yeah, they're all fully God. They're so all they're all 100% God. They're all 100% God. So the Father is 100% God. I know what you're trying to say, 100% plus 100% plus 100%, 300%, 300%. You can't have 300%. No, no, that's what I'm trying to say, that's math. I'm, I'm, uh, sorry, I'm, yeah, so so just focus with me. I don't know who he is. I don't know. He's someone walking by. So, yeah, so 100%, 100% my question to you is this. If, if someone is 100, if someone is 100% something, then he's 0% anything else. If I'm fully human, then I cannot be anything else by definition. If this table is 100% plastic, it cannot be 100% metal as well. That's fine. Because it's only 100% in everything, yeah. right? So if the Father is already 100% God, yeah. fully God, yeah. then is that one God already? No. So he's not fully God then? He is fully God. How? But that's not one God. So he, okay. so he is he, what is missing? Nothing. Wait, so, sorry. Yes, you, you can help us. If yes. you have Come three in. gods, you're, yes. you're suggesting you have three gods. Yes. You're suggesting that they're, they're somehow less because there's three. You have to divide. Is that, are they less powerful because there's three? No, that's not the argument. The argument is if there is three gods, that's not monotheism, that's polytheism. And the, and the Bible argues the message of all of the messengers of God is that God is one. The Bible says, for example, in Deuteronomy 6, 4, Hero Israel, our Lord God is one God. A man who came to Jesus in Luke and he said, what is the most important command? He said, your Lord God is one God. He repeated the Shema, which is that there is only one God. So if Jesus affirms there's only one God, in the Old Testament clearly says, I'm, I'm the Lord, there's no other gods, there's no God beside me. And you tell me there's three gods, I'll say your own book refutes you. We'll say the message of all the messengers was there's only one God. So if we prove, if we say the Trinity means more than one God, then this belief is not a biblical belief, it's a polytheistic belief believe that was introduced into Christianity. That's our argument that we make. But let me ask you this. You say, is the Father the Son? No. The Father is not the Son. The Father is not the Son. Father okay, again, the again. So let, let, me, let me, you tell me as well if I'm being rational here. Father is 100% God. 100% God. Fully God. Son is 100%. Son is 100% God. Fully God. Holy Spirit is 100% God. Fully God. Fully God. Father is not the Son. Son is not the Holy Spirit. But that's not three. That's not three. Okay, you tell me how does that make sense? Right. Okay. Uh, in 
Okay. Right. So you have uh -huh. one God. As yes. You mentioned throughout the Old Testament and New Testament. Yes. Yes. One God. Yes. One God. One hundred percent. You have the Father from the divine essence. One hundred percent God. Okay. He's a, he's a hundred percent of God. Okay. So that's God. Made up one hundred percent of God. So we have one God. There you go. Yes. No. No. That's not true at all. But that's one hundred percent God, right? You have the Father made up one hundred percent of God. You have the yes. Holy Spirit made up one hundred percent of God. So two. Okay. No, one, How is it one? You said just the Father, Holy Spirit. You just say two things. You said the Father. You said the Father is not the Holy Spirit. The Father is not the Holy Spirit. So there's not one then? They're separate beings. Separate persons. Oh, separate beings. Separate persons, persons. Okay. Persons if they, but this is my question. Are they separate or are they one? They are one. But separate. One being separate persons. One but separate. Yeah, one God and separate persons. That's what I'm asking. So they're one but they're, separate. they're separate. They're separate in things that... Let me ask. Okay, okay. Different purposes. Okay. But they're still one God. But that's not the Christian argument. The Christian argument is that they are 100%, 100%, 100%. It's not 300 percent is one I'll tell you what I'll tell you what you say the Father Son and the Holy Spirit are the same yes. right yeah. that means whatever the Father knows the Son knows because they're the same no I'm asking a question if if you say they're all the same you you tell me if the Father if the Father is the Son and the Son is the Holy Spirit they're one being so that being would have the same knowledge if they're fully God same power same yeah so Christians say they're co-equal co-equal co-eternal that's the term that Christians use in the creed yeah. oh, you don't okay that's, I'm sorry, I'm that's why I don't worry okay do you agree the creed says they're co-equal co-eternal the creed literally says this God the Father God the Son God the Holy Spirit Father is not the Son Son is not the Holy Spirit co-equal co-eternal three persons in one being is that the Trinity I know it very well now I'm saying uh, no problem so when it says when it says that there are three persons they're co-equal by definition if one has something the other person has to have it that's what equality means yes the, okay so if the Father knows everything, the Son knows everything, the Holy Spirit knows everything. Do you agree? Yes, I do agree. Uh, but I'm waiting for but. Yes, yes, yes. The Father is yes. outside of creation. So he can see all of time. Okay. The Son Jesus is on earth. So then they're not equal. So, no, because what do you mean? How can you know something without being able to see it? Okay, so one can see, one cannot see. One became flesh. Because one can't Let me use your argument. Okay, I'll, okay, I'll in explain. In the universe, huh? yes? can you see all of time or is time flat? I'm a limited being, no. Okay, so Jesus is a limited being. Okay, so he's not. When he was walking on earth, was he fully God, divine, fully, hundred percent? God is human form. So he was. So, God. Oh, so he was hundred percent God, fully divine. So he was fully divine. All the attributes of God, co-equal still. Yes. Okay. When if he was co-equal, when he was on earth, I'm just using understanding your argument. When he was on earth and he was. I know you know this argument. I know you know. No, but I, I'm saying what you. Uh, my argument is what you're saying doesn't make sense and you know it. Why? I'll tell you why it doesn't make sense. I'm, I'm making. I don't but understand. I'm making the point and you tell me, right? Okay. Why it doesn't make sense is because whenever I tell you that Jesus is not equal, you claim he's human. But then I ask you, is he 100% God when he was there? You say yes. So if he is 100% God there, yes. then he has all the attributes of God. He's from the spirit of God, 100% divine essence in him. God's spirit. Why is that divine essence? Explain it to me. What do you mean by that divine essence? That divine essence is all power, omniscient, omniscient. That's what it is, right? He's from the essence of God. He's God, the Son, so 100% God in flesh. What I'm saying is... When he was 100% God in flesh, I'm trying to understand this point. When he's 100% God in flesh, that means what? What is the divine part about Jesus? What means Jesus is divine? Go ahead, tell me. He was from the Son of God. He is the Son of God. He's from God's spirit. <laughs> According to the Bible, all Christians are the sons of God and they're created by God. So that doesn't make Jesus unique. I'm asking the question, what makes he's Jesus... Uncreated. He's uncreated. He was there before time. Oh, excellent. He so is, this is the argument here. He is the word. So he, is, he has the attributes of God is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So if... if excellent. So if Jesus is God when he was walking on earth, yes. he should have all the attributes of God. But he couldn't because, because he was in the universe. So he doesn't have the attributes of God. He does have the attributes of God. He's, in, he's limited by his human exactly. form. Limited by definition can be. never be God. No, but he's in human form. Right? Uh -huh. So humans If you say limited in attributes, you cannot be God. If he's choosing, can, yes. God, can God make something he can't lift? Do you know do you know the problem with that question is what? Yeah. It's a paradox. Yeah, no, it's why okay, so don't don't why are you asking a question which is not rational? Why is it not why is it not rational? Because what we define as God is all powerful. So that scenario cannot happen. So you cannot use the term God and then say cannot lift something because by definition God is all powerful. So that is a non a non question as they say, it's not rational, it's not consistent. Not every question is consistent. I'll give you an example. How many legs does the sun have? From one to ten? 
legs have? The how many legs does the sun have from one to ten? That is a that is a non-question. It's not a rational question. Exactly. So, but I'm saying from one to ten. So not every question is a rational question. Some questions this is the point I'm making. Some questions are not rational questions. They're not. They're defying consistent logic. That's what example of of, of it. Sorry. Would you say the Quran follows? All the same logic. There's no discrepancy. Quran is consistent. Your, yes. You, yes. You believe there's nothing. Every, everything in the Quran you believe absolutely. Not, not only I believe the Quran itself makes that claim. The Quran in chapter 4 verse 82 says if this book was from anyone other than Allah, you'll find in it many discrepancies, many contradictions, etc. So it says by default, anything from God cannot have contradictions. So that is the claim I'm making now. But not only, I'm not only saying that, I'm saying the Trinity is not even in the Bible. We're discussing it, I'm showing. Okay, go ahead, where is the Trinity? Jesus says baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay, so when you bring this verse in Matthew and then say that Jesus said baptize in the name, what's your name? Angus. Give me any name. Angus and he's... Let's call, call him John, right? Okay. And you, let's call you Luke. Baptize in the name of Luke, John and Angus. That doesn't mean you three are one. Are one. The verse that you brought that mentioned baptism in the name of three individuals does not say they're one, number one. Does not say they're persons. Does not say person is different from the being. For you to just say because something mentions three names, that's the Trinity, that doesn't make sense. We define the Trinity. I'll tell you what you need to find. You need to find verses in the Bible that defines that the Son, the Father and the Holy Spirit are all gods and they're persons not beings and they're all three in one which is what the Trinity is. Not necessarily one verse, just find verses that say that. Go ahead. Your argument is... You're not going to find a single verse that says Jesus is divine. You're not going to find a single verse... Go ahead. Find one verse that says the three are one. But if your argument is dissembling the three, yes. and it's not mentioned in the Bible, then what is your argument? The Bible is, you're saying the Bible is I'll tell you my argument. I'll tell, you this I'll tell you my argument. Dissembling. My argument is first, number one, Trinity is not rational. It does not make any sense. Number one, number one the Trinity is not rational. It does not make rational sense. Number two, people believe it without it even being in the Bible. So I'm making two arguments there. The Christians believe in what the Roman Empire introduced. Remember what I told you before. Prophets of God all said there is only one God. The Roman Empire accepted Christianity and they brought the idea of the Trinity. So I'm making the claim. It's not even biblical. It's not from God. And because of that, it does not make sense. Okay. So I was highlighting for him why it's not also, rational. That yes. Islam is not influenced by society. Your, this is pure throughout the time. Whatever is in the Quran is only the word of God. Not the Quran, because yes. you're not referring to Bible, you're referring to Christianity. You're oh. saying Islam is unaffected by society. Anyone who believes anything that is outside the Quran or the prophetic te teachings, yes, but I'm making a point. The same for Christianity. No, no, no. You make the claim that it's affected by I'll tell you. I'll tell you the difference. I'll tell you the difference. I, I was just making the difference now. Anyone who believes anything that is not found in the Quran or the prophetic tradition, from our perspective as Muslims, we say that's not Islam. Now the Christians, not just some of them believe some wrong beliefs. We're saying the predominant majority of Christians believe in the Trinity that is not even in the Bible. You're not going to find a single belief in which you will find the overwhelming majority of Muslims believing that is not found in their text. So no, Muslims are never influenced throughout history to believe something is not even in their books. Okay. Give me an example. Uh, I am not knowledgeable enough, Go. to be honest. Okay, but, so do research. But, but to, to say that there's not influence, you know... I did, I did my research. I did my research. most people, which is... You're saying most people believe the right thing, but you're no, saying no, there I, still is... I'm saying anyone, any Muslim. But there's so many different types of... Not types of Muslim, but there is a lot of range in what... Yeah, much there is disagreements between people. Christianity or any belief ever is going to have a Yes, yes. there is disagreements between people. There is disagreements between people in Islam, but these disagreements are still scriptural. Now, did you find the the, the evidences? So you've got John fourteen ten. Okay. It says, I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. All right. Okay. Now let me respond to that by saying that doesn't help you because the, the same Bible says that all the believers are in God the same way Jesus is in the Father. So if you claim that Jesus is in God divine meaning is the divine essence of the Trinity then all the believers are part of the Trinity where's the evidence for that John 17 21 Jesus is just like I and you are one all the believers will be one with us so that's not an argument there what else do you have plus it doesn't include the Holy Spirit so it's not the Trinity plus it doesn't say it's a person a different 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 a person or a being 
go ahead. What, what does it say? That one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. okay. Well, so you can't say Allah is your father, can you? No, it's not. I can't. It's not. I can't. Allah doesn't have children. Therefore, I don't say Allah is a father. But he says, desist or something from desist from saying. It's about sonship, not about fatherhood. Allah says in the Quran, do not claim sons for him because sons is a deficiency. You need a son. First, if, you, if you're God and your son is God, he will have the same attributes as you. So it's more than one God, number one. Number two, if you have a son, what, what, why do you have sons as human beings? Continue our legacy because we die. Protect us when we're old because we become weak. All of these things are deficiencies that the Creator does not require or need. Yes. Yes. Okay, yeah, so, so I'm asking you yeah. right now, as someone who already believes in the Trinity, where is the Trinity in your Bible? I'll show you, it's Matthew 20, he says Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I, resp I responded to that. You agreed with me. What did you say, sir? Be fair, be fair. You agreed with me when I defined the Trinity. That the Trinity says God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And it says they're not, the person is not beings. And then it says the three are one. The verse you brought, all it does is it mentions someone who's called the Father, someone who's called the Holy Spirit, and someone who's called Jesus. It mentions the three in one verse. But it doesn't say they're one. It doesn't say the person's not, it not beings. One, they are one. Sorry? Did it not say it? It doesn't say it. No, that. It doesn't say that. No, it's one. Just mentions them. Okay. Yeah, but you could and by the way, this verse, that verse, I'll, I'll add to that, that verse is, a, is according to many uh, textual criticism scholars and interpolation in the Bible. What is the evidence for that? You're not going to find a single disciple in the book of Acts or whatever it is, this, the baptizing in the name of the Father and uh, Son and Holy Spirit. You only baptize in the name of Jesus. Even though they did it multiple times. You find Peter doing it, you find other apostles doing it, but no one does it in the name of the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And if Jesus addressed all of the disciples and told them do this, it doesn't make any rational sense for none of them to be doing it after Jesus was gone. Okay, but you couldn't say, take your shahada in the name of Muhammad, Jibreel. We don't say that. Yeah, no, 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 we take our shahada, actually we take two, the shahada is two parts. Right. Testifier is only one God for, uh, yeah, yeah. worthy for sure. Prophet Muhammad is his messenger. Yeah. But we don't make him equal with Allah. That's what I'm yeah. Jesus there is making the claim that it is equal as you're baptizing in the name of the Father. No, no, that, that's a claim you're making. That's not what the scriptures say. Okay, why else would he say Father and Holy Spirit? Sorry? Why else would he say Father and Holy Spirit? I made that point for you. I said, if someone accepts a faith and you mention the name of someone, you just mention the name in this case. Right. We mention the name of Prophet Muhammad in the Shahada. It doesn't mean we, he's equal now to God, that we worship him too. Mentioning the name is not the argument. Your argument but is no the one Trinity. You're saying it's another God. You're saying it's the same God. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, where does the Bible say that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit so are three persons in one being? Is you do not believe the Bible suggests the Holy Spirit is God. No, no. My, again, I'll, I'll say the argument again. Sorry. I'm saying the Bible nowhere does it does it say that the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are three persons in one being which is God? They're united in one being which is God. There's nowhere does the Bible say that. But it says the opposite. No, no, it says the opposite. Belief that you do not, do not believe in the Bible and Jesus. No, I'm saying then. What is it that prevents you from believing in Jesus? What prevents? I believe in Jesus as a Muslim. I have to. Okay. As, okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I cannot be a Muslim unless I believe in Jesus. Yeah. Sorry. What prevents? Okay, because the Bible is historically changed. It's historically corrupted. Even Christians themselves don't agree on what is the Bible, what constitutes the Bible. We have Protestants believing in 66 books. We have Catholics believing in 73. We have Orthodox believing in 80s. It depends on yeah, what. The, the, yeah. But they still. all agree on the same ones. The Protestants believe in, and Catholics but, believe in the same ones. The Orthodox. Okay. So, so the extra books are the are the revelation from God or not? I don't know. That's Which manuscript should you rely on when you have the Protestant Bible? Open the King James and open RSV and you will find they have verses that are extra, uh, taken out, verses that some people will believe in. Why is the oldest manuscript, full manuscript of the Bible that you have? The full Bible? Yes, the oldest. New Testament, actually New Testament, because you have two Testament. separate. New oh, Testament. Including all the letters or just the Gospels? The New Testament, full New Testament that you believe in. So, uh, I think it's around 700 maybe. Okay. Seven eight hundred, I think, somewhere like that. So four hundred years. He said it's in seven hundred eighty. It's maybe, not. Maybe early. It's before. It's earlier. So nearly four hundred years. The Codex Sinaiticus is the name of the manuscript. The earliest you have. Then you have the Codex Vaticanus. It's three fifty three sixty. It's in the fourth century. Nearly four hundred years after Jesus. We have a manuscript written by unknown people. We know who wrote the manuscripts of the Quran that we have. This is written by unknown people. Who found who is, what is um, the the oldest uh, manuscript that they. 
have. So it's written by unknown individuals. We don't know how accurate this is, yeah. but the earliest they have. Oh, but I'll take your word for it. Yes. Yeah. Do no, your no, research. No, no, I, 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 do your research. I'm 400. I give you the name of the manuscript. It's called the Codex Sinaiticus. You're welcome to do the research. 400 years after Jesus, written by unknown people. We don't know. Wrote their name. We don't know the source. Christians will say this is a copy of 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 what Mark wrote. Okay, we don't have what Mark wrote, the original. We don't know in, throughout the copying what was going on. We don't know how many corruptions that happened. We don't know who wrote these ones. So you have something that's 400 years old. Do you know the Old Testament is worse? Do you know what is the earliest manuscript you have written in the, in the Old Testament? Carbon dation. Dead Sea Scrolls. Do you know how far the Sea Scrolls are from Moses? Uh, 1,000. Nearly 2,000 years. So you have something written 2,000 years separate from Moses, the source, the Old Testament, now we're talking. Nearly 2,000 years later, written by a heretic group, the Jewish people consider them a heretic group. And there's many things in it that are rejected by Christians. They say that we don't agree with that because it's not in our book. So is it that we accept what is written in the Jesus scrolls because they're early, or do we pick and choose because you believe something today, so you'll pick and choose what you like? It's more the belief in, in God, yeah. especially. You're, you're putting this almost above, above God. It's, it's not this is the word Word of God. How can I put it above God? It's literally the Word of God. Yeah, this is right, this yeah, is me course. putting God and first. In, in <laughs> yes. the, same way, the Bible is the Bible is not the Word of God. Is the argument I'm making. So, it's been changed by men. And who's this written by? The Quran is written by the companions of the Prophet Who who are the exactly? Abu Bakr Siddiq, Umar Al Khattab, Zaid Ibn Thabit, Uthman Ibn Affan. You know, uh, there's a list of what we call writers of revelation. I can give you not only that, their life, when were they born, when did they die, I can tell you everything about them. It's the difference between Islam, that's what I told you you know for sure. That's how we know for sure. No, you can't know anything for sure. I, let me ask you this question. What do you mean by for sure? If you you mean absolute hundred percent certainty. You can't. It's impossible. Let me let me show you how you know for sure. I'm not saying I'll tell you why the argument your argument you're making is self-refutational. Do you know for sure that you cannot know anything for sure? Now think about what I just said now, very carefully. Do you know for sure yes. that you cannot know any, So there no, is something no, no, you can know no, for sure. Actually, no, I take, no. So there is, say, look, sorry. either way, it's a self-defeated argument. Sorry, say I'll say again. again. Yes. Your argument is a self-defeated argument. And there is what, here is why it's a self-defeated argument. If I say there is nothing that I can 100% absolutely know, is that statement, there is nothing that I can 100% absolutely know, is it 100% accurate? No, because there are some things. Then, then, then there are certain things yes, that we can know. Yes. Okay, okay, done. But, but you cannot. Yes, you would need proof. But I was given the proof to him. No, First, no, the oral... There's limited simple. proof you've given. You have given proof, but there no. is proof also to Christianity. No, no, you, you tell me. Limited proof. You, no, 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 there is no proof in Christianity. The reason is there's this. There is much proof. I'm coming to you. There is no proof in Christianity because there is no original uh, carbonated manuscript from the time. There is no proof because there is no living tradition of people memorizing. There is no history behind it. What is the proof you're talking there about? There is much history. Tell me. I, I, you are clearly more educated, first of all, than most. It's not about that, but you're yeah, making no. the claim. You're you, making the you claim. Are, you are well researched. I'm here. So on how the do? You, okay, let me ask you this question. Low, I admit a much I'll, lower no, that's, education level. That's fine to say. Self. That's fine. But then you cannot make an argument and say there is when you don't know. Yes, but this argument from ignorance. No, 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 no. Way, that's, you would admit that there are other Muslims that have a higher knowledge than you about your own religion. Because that's not relevant. I'm not making no, but claims. Is, but I'll, I'll respond to that. I can still have. Can I tell you why? Based on the amount. Knowledge I know, and you have the beliefs. I'll tell you about knowledge you know. I'll tell you the difference. You don't know what you don't know. No, no, no. I'll tell you the difference. I speak about that which I know. In which, in which I do as too. No, you made you made a claim that the Christians have evidences. When I ask you what those they evidences were, evidence. go ahead, tell me. Well, is is the huh. is the Bible for the preservation evidence? The Bible is what we're discussing, whether, yes, whether it's preserved or not. This, to say there's flaws in it... I'm not saying flaws, I'm talking about argument. historical preservation. What is the evidence for historical your, preservation? Oh, sorry, to say there are flaws in the argument of its evidence. There's no right? argument. Well, of course there's an argument. If, it, if it's here... And it Do you know that Christian scholars admit the Bible has been changed? And there is no original found there, today? There are many versions of No, no, the and there is no original that they have. They admit to that. You have an original? No. The, you have you, an original of the Quran? The, I'm making a point, a very important point. Yeah, yes. When I say... Christian scholars themselves admit yeah, yeah, yeah. the earliest ever they have. Yeah, sorry. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> we, came probably, we bore him. Yeah, we yeah. bore him. We'll, 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 wrap, we'll wrap it up. Yes, we'll wrap it up. Yes. Wrap it up. yes, yes. <laughs> Christian scholars themselves wrote books about the corruption of the Bible. For instance, Bruce Metzger has a book called The Text of the New Testament. It's transmission, corruption, and restoration. He believes it's been corrupted. He's a Christian scholar, textual criticism scholar. Bart Ehrman used to be a Christian and left Christianity, and he wrote books about, he became agnostic by the way, mm. and he wrote books like Misquoting 
Jesus about manuscripts. Christians admit that there is books called Q source, M source, etc. that they don't have today that the copyist was copying from. When you ask me, do I have an original Quran? I'm telling you, you have from the first century, you have Qurans that are carbon dated the first century from the, uh, of the Prophet. In fact, Birmingham manuscript, which is a parchment, it's not the full Quran, it's from the life of the Prophet himself. And it's exactly what we're reading today. So for you to say, like, this is the same, no. The thing is, when you say there's an argument for preservation, Christian scholars, textual criticism ones, do not make an argument for preservation anyways. They already say we agree, we don't have originals, we have multiple manuscripts that are changed. Yes, but in the same way you have people that, have, that argue parts of... Uh, do you know your argument so far is you do, you do, you do, but no, it's but not that's, defending... That's what it's you're, not saying, <laughs> you're saying Christians do this, and I also say uh, Muslims Can I this. tell you what? No, 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 but if you ask me about Islam, I respond first with our evidences, and then I critique Christianity. I'm trying to make you understand the difference between what we're doing, yes, me and you. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to make you understand mm. is there are also flaws in your in your the evidence tell religion, me not necessarily your religion go ahead because i don't want to i don't want no no i'm not going to get offended like no 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 I that's not disrespectful i, I believe to... i believe that's a, that's a claim disrespectful will be abusive words cursing and this and that I'm, I'm, no, I'm, no, no, but if i was yeah. to, to say something and i you have to back it's it up not factually correct exactly then it could be offensive Which yeah it is correct? and there are many things that hmm. yeah that, that people question you here but i i'm not educated and it's not interesting okay. enough because i'm i am confirmed in my beliefs and based on what I know and the evidence that I've seen, uh -huh. that that's, that's what I believe. And there is evidence you're saying, and yes, you're saying there are flaws in the evidence. And no, I would I'm say not, there are certainly flaws I'm not saying that. No. Okay. Now, your argument is called an argument from ignorance. Number one, you claim there's an argument for preservation of the biblical scripture. You've not provided what the argument is. And then I've provided you from your own tradition. What is your earliest manuscripts are? What your scholars say? And what is the name of the, uh, names of the book? You're, you're similar Allow me, allow me just to finish. Allow, allow me to finish, please. And then, my argument is based on evidences. So I give you names, manuscripts, books, etc. I give you references. And then you argue from ignorance, you say, I'm sure there is flaws. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure there is flaws in your tradition. And I'm sure there is arguments for our tradition. I don't know what they are, but I am sure they're there. It's called an argument from ignorance. Until okay. you present them, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Yes, I, I take Until I, you present... I question. Yes, I understand. Go ahead. Yes. So, you're the Quran, which I have not read. <laughs> um, are you saying that the rules can be easily put into Western society? There's so many different types of society around okay. the world. Sure. And this is obviously the same mm. as, is, mm -hmm. as is the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, you're saying that there's no problem with applying these rules to different societies. Have, have no problems at all is what you're saying. A hundred percent. And I'll, I'll respond by why. Because number one, this is from God. And God knows everything and He knows the future. So He knows how society will turn out. He knows the differences. And He said, Allah, the Creator said, is that these rules are timeless. Meaning that these t rules can be applicable until the Day of Judgment. Yes. Now, based on that, I say yes, I'm hundred percent sure that whatever there is, rules in the Quran and the evidence for that are Muslims are living with them today till this day I live with the rules of the Quran and don't live with other rules well, we're going to have to leave some point so, okay. yeah, yeah we need to let you go no problem no problem no, problem. no, 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 no issues nice talking to you guys it's called the Muslim lantern Muslim lantern